Here we have a simple beam. It's five and a half meters long with a point load, 15 kilonewtons, not quite in the center. Uh, we have previously worked out the reaction forces, VA and VC. Now we're going to draw the shear force and then use the shear force diagram to draw the bend a moment diagram. So with the diagram, our free body diagram at the top of the page, first I'm going to draw in some construction lines. I'm going to draw in a zero line as well. This will be our shear force diagram given in kilonewtons. Start at zero and we should finish at zero. What we're going to do is that we're going to start on the left hand side and reveal the beam and add up our do a summation of the forces up to any particular point. On the left hand side we start at zero and the first thing that we just reveal if we go in just a fraction is to reveal the first reaction VA which is 8.19 and that will cause a jump up in our shear force diagram to that value. As we move along the beam the total force from the start to any point so far stays the same at 8.19 and indeed it stays the same until we get to the middle or not quite the middle but where the 15 kilonewtons point load is applied so just before we reach the 15 kilonewtons the total force we have is a positive 8.19 Once we go a fraction past to reveal the 15 kilonewton point load, what that will do is it will cause a drop of 15 kilonewtons from a present value of 8.19, and that will take us to a value of 6.81 negative. We continue on for the second part of the beam. The resultant force from the start to any point stays the same at 6.81 6 until we come to the very end of the beam and the last reaction which is 6.81 will cause us to close off our shear force diagram bringing us back to zero. That is our shear force diagram drawn. The next stage will be to draw our bend a moment diagram. For that, we will need to work out the area on our shear force diagram. So we will need to work out this green area, which is above the axis. And as well, we will need to work out this blue area beneath the axis. The height we already have, that's the value on the y-axis which is your shear force and the distance along will be the distances used to locate each of the points i.e. the 2.5 or the 3 meters. The first area, the green area, the area will be simply length by breadth 2.5 times 8.19 and that gives you a value of 20.475. That will be in the units of kilonewton meters. For the second blue area, again, its area is going to be length by breadth, 3 times minus 6.81. And that will give you a value of negative 20.43 kilonewton meters. At this point, before we draw our bend moment diagram, we're going to do a quick check. And if our mass is correct, if we add the areas on our shear force 
diagram together. The green one is positive. The blue one is negative. We're going to add those two together. The areas on our shear force diagram should add up to give a zero. And indeed, it doesn't quite give a zero, but for all intents and purposes, it gives us a very small number, which is more or less equivalent to zero. The reason why we don't get exactly zero is due to rounding of numbers. Then to draw our minimum diagram, first of all, we're going to draw in some more construction lines. Draw in a zero line. Label this our bend and moment diagram. The units are going to be in kilonewton meters. We're going to start off at zero. Then to get the points on our bend and moment diagram what we do is we add up the area we have on the shear force diagram so starting on the left hand side we have zero area therefore we can plot zero on our bend and moment diagram then as we move across the shear force diagram we're gradually revealing more and more area and at this point two and a half meters in from the left hand side we can we know what the total area we have, which is 20.475, and we can plot that on our bend and moment diagram. As we continue on to the next part of the beam, we have negative area, so this value will gradually decrease and decrease and decrease until we come to the right hand side of the beam, add the two areas together, and we get. 0.045 or for all intents and purposes zero now we're left with trying to join the three points and to do that we're going to look at the value of the shear force at the top and here on the second part of the beam along the first part of the beam the shear force is constant at 8.19 what that means is that over this region we will have a straight line and the gradient of this straight line will be the value of the shear force i.e. 8.19. Shear force is constant therefore the gradient is constant. Looking at the next part of the beam the shear force is constant at minus 6.81 therefore the gradient of the line in this next region will be constant and would be going downhill i.e. negative gradient so that gradient there will be minus 6.81 and that's your shear force and your bend and moment diagram drawn Probably the only key point from our bend moment diagram would be your maximum bending moment. It would be a value of 20.475 kilonewton meters at a location which is 2.5 meters from the left hand side. 